Hello and welcome to the Unit 3 tutorial for Ed Scratch. In this video, we're going to look at changing the flow of a program using loops and events. And we're also going to look at how commenting can help you keep track of where your program is going. So we're going to start with some loops. But before we do, we're just going to put a, uh, a simple little program down into Edison. So in this case, we're just going to start with a drive forwards of 10 and a turn 90 degrees. So if we downloaded this program into Edison, we would Edison would drive forwards and then spin 90 degrees, and then that would be it. The program would be over, but it would be very useful for us if Edison could do this more often. Now, we could, of course, just keep dragging blocks out, and eventually we would get a full square, or if we changed how far we're turning, we could get a triangle or an octagon or whatever we feel like getting. But there is an easier way to do that, and that is by changing how Edison steps through this code. The easiest way to do this is with loops. So we have two different types of loops. We have forever and repeat. So we'll start with the repeat block. The repeat block, anything that is sat inside the repeat block will be repeated however many times you input. So in this case, this is going to repeat 10 times. Now what this means is that Edison is going to start the repeat block do the blocks inside the repeat block, go, okay, I've done this once, Start, jump back to the top of the repeat block and do it again. And then it says, okay, I've done this two times. And it's going to keep doing this all the way up until it hits the input number. Now, in this case, I'm gonna change that to four. So that means it is going. Edison is going to run through, drive forwards and spin right four times, completing a full square. And then after that, it is going to jump out the end of the block. And as you can see on the repeat block, you can connect other blocks after it. So if I wanted to, I can drive my full square, then I can drive backwards for 20 centimeters. And that is a complete program. The other type of loop that we have here is the forever block. Now the forever loop works very similar to the repeat loop, but it doesn't have an end. So if I put this around all of this stuff, you will see that there's no input parameter up here. This tells Edison to just do everything that's inside this block continuously, forever, until either the batteries run out or you press a square button on Edison to stop the program from working. So in this case, Edison is going to drive a square, drive backwards for 20 centimeters, then loop back round to the start of the forever block. There is nothing to look at here, so it's just going to keep going and it's gonna drive another square using the repeat four and then drive backwards and then loop. And it is just going to keep doing this, as I said before, until either it runs out of batteries or you hit the square button to stop it. What I've done in this program is called nesting loops. It is where you take a loop, in this case, the little repeat four and nest it inside another loop, which means that the inside loop is going to be repeated every time the outside loop gets repeated, which means that you kind of get a double repetition on this inside loop because you get the repetition from the first loop that will happen. And then once that loop is finished, it jumps back out and then the main loop triggers and you get back to the second loop and you kind of keep going around that second loop until that loop finishes and then once again you kind of kick back out and you will see that by nesting loops you can make Edison do the same thing many many times over using very few blocks as you can see here. Now nesting loops is not the only way you can use loops as with every other type of block you can also stack these so if we wanted to we could do our square then drive backwards and then inside this forever we could add a beep. And what this would do is it would do our drive, it would then drive backwards, and then it would sit there forever beeping at you, basically making an alarm telling you that the program has finished. And this is called stacking loops. We can, especially if we get rid of the drive backwards here, it would drive our square and then immediately go on to beeping forever. So this is just a stack of loops and that is also perfectly fine. You can also nest as many loops as you like inside each other until your program does whatever it is that you want it to do. So I could actually stack something else in here. So rather than beeping once, maybe we wanna beep 10 times. So now when we run this program, Edison is going to drive the square, then beep 10 times, and then this loop is going to trigger again, and we're gonna drive another square, and then beep another 10 times, and then just keep going around forever and ever and ever. 
So you can keep stacking and nesting loops like this until your program works the way you want it to. Now that we've seen how loops can change a program by making Edison repeat the series of blocks, let's take a look at a different type of block that makes Edison react instantly to an event. And these are the event blocks. Now if we click into the event blocks in the block palette, you'll notice that these look very similar to the start block that is always in the main program. They have a nice little rounded dome on top of them and then they have a space to connect blocks in underneath. Now, if we click and drag these out, you can see that unlike all the rest of the blocks, when I click and drag these out, these are removed from the block palette. That's because each of these can only exist once in your program. For now, we're going to look at the clap detected, round button pressed and triangle button pressed events. There are a lot more events sitting here inside the events palette, but we'll have a look at those in a future video. Now, as I mentioned before, you can absolutely connect blocks in underneath any event block that you drag into your program. So in this case, we're going to turn the left LED on when the triangle button is pressed, and then we're gonna turn the left LED off again when the round button is pressed. So how this program will work in Edison is Edison is going to run through the main program when you press the triangle button for the first time to start the program up. And it's gonna do everything that's sitting in here just constantly and forever because we have everything wrapped in this big forever block. So it's gonna sit there doing our little square and then, oops, that's not a square at the moment, that's a square now. It's gonna do our little square and then it's gonna beep 10 times and then it's gonna do another square and it's gonna keep doing that. And then at some point, if Edison is driving or beeping or doing something in this main program and we press the triangle button at any time, Edison's going to immediately stop what it's doing jump all the way over to the triangle button pressed, turn on the LED, and then as soon as it gets to the end of the blocks connected here, it's going to jump back to the main program. So if Edison was sitting in this loop here and beeping 10 times and we press the triangle button, it's gonna quickly jump out, turn the LED on, and then jump back to exactly where it was before. So it will continue beeping until there are 10 beeps done and then it's gonna keep driving, but now the left LED is on. Once again, as it's going, it may be driving forwards for 10 centimeters and you jump in and press the round button. Edison is going to, while still driving forwards, jump out over here into the round button pressed, turn the LED off again, and then jump back into this drive forwards for 10 seconds block and keep going. And then once we get to the end of that, it's going to spin and going to keep doing its square and then do the beeps and then just keep going. So these events happen as soon as the thing on the block is done or Edison detects the event that is written on the block. So they're an easy way of getting Edison to react to the outside world. A key point here though, is that Edison always needs a main program. So if I removed our little square program from here, you will see I get a red error saying that there's nothing connected to the start event block. And that means that there's nothing for Edison to do when you hit the triangle button. So Edison is going to try to start the program, but there's going to be nothing there. So Edison's going to end the program very, very quickly, which means that you're not going to have time to clap or press the triangle button or press the round button. So if you want to use the events, but don't really want Edison to be doing anything, you want Edison to be sitting there waiting for you to press a button or make a clap, then you can use the forever loop and just sit it as an empty loop like that. Now, this means that Edison is going to sit in the main program doing nothing, just kind of looping around with no blocks to really loop around. And then when you use the other buttons, Edison is going to jump from this loop out to the event, do the event, and then jump back into the forever loop. So in this case, we can make it so that Edison turns on the LED when a clap is detected and turns the LED off when we press the round button, but then let's say plays a whole note when the triangle button is pressed. So this way we've got some different functions happening when we do things to Edison and Edison will react to those as soon as Edison detects those things happening. So as you can see, when you start changing the way the blocks work and the order in which the blocks are run by Edison, things start to get a little bit confusing. And sometimes it's nice to be able to 
keep track of how everything's going to work, especially if you're trying to work with somebody and gives them your code so that they can then understand. This is where comments come in. So comments are a new uh, category in the block palette and there's just a single block in here that says comment your comment. So if we click and drag this out, you can then see that you can type anything you like into the actual input here. Now, this is a comment for you. It is basically a sticky note that you stick on the program to tell people what the program is supposed to be doing at that point. So right here, in this point in this program, we want Edison to sit there doing nothing until one of the events is detected. So we're just gonna say, wait forever until event. So there we go. Now that is a comment. Now, as I said, a comment is kind of a sticky note that you stick on the program. And Edison ignores sticky notes. In fact, the compiler that sends the code down to Edison ignores your little sticky notes. It kind of looks at your program, sees the sticky note, takes the sticky note off, compiles the program down and sends that to Edison. So the sticky note is just there so that you, when you're looking at your own code or when you share your code to somebody else, they can look at it, look at the sticky note and go, oh, okay, I understand. I know what this program is supposed to do. This block isn't going to make Edison talk. It's not going to uh, make the compiler do something. It is literally just there so that you and anybody you share your code with know what you're trying to do in your code. It's a really good way of making sure that uh, you can read your code when you come back to it, or as I said, somebody else can read your code. It's a good idea to comment everything you're trying to do. So this is turn an LED on, LED on after a clap. And so we can see that that's what's gonna happen because it says clap detected and then it's got the turn LED on. But somebody who's new to Scratch or Ed Scratch might not know what that's going to do. So if you try and share this code with them and they are trying to work out what it's doing, this comment is going to help them understand that a little bit better. Or at least it's going to help them understand what your intention is and then when they program it down to Edison, they'll see that your comment makes sense and they'll understand that you knew what you were doing when you were trying to program this program into Edison. And that is the end of the Unit 3 tutorial. In the Unit 4 tutorial, we'll have a more in-depth look at sensors and how we can use them in Ed Scratch to make Edison interact with the world in a more meaningful way.